Hey everyone! Today we are going to be talking about everyone's favourite bad influence on children. Ken Ham. Now it's been a little bit of a while since I made any of my creation for kids videos and I thought it would be fun to jump back into the topic by looking at another Answers for Kids book from Answers in Genesis and Ken Ham in particular. This book is volume 4 which is all about sin, salvation and Christian life and it is just as dark and depressing and stupid as it sounds. As usual we're going to be looking at three questions, three answers and just showing what a terrible, terrible influence Ken is on children. So first up we're going to be looking at the question, why do animals die? We're the ones who sinned so why are they punished? They didn't do anything wrong. Well, animals die because that's pretty much what nearly all living things do eventually. Death is a part of life, as horrible as that sounds. And I don't think there's anything wrong with teaching kids that. You know, the kid that's asking this question is right to some extent. I mean, if we humans have been punished for something, why take it out on innocent animals, right? Ken's answer starts with, It is so very sad when an animal dies, especially a favourite pet. And you are right. They don't sin because they have no souls. Harsh? Now, I personally don't believe in souls. I think the whole idea of us having a soul is a load of rubbish. But I do believe in a consciousness. Many animals have at least some level of consciousness. Many of them do have a sense of self and a lot of them do have an awareness of their surroundings. They can feel emotions, they can recognise emotions in others. Ken Ham often in his writing doesn't seem to realise this. He goes on to say, But the Bible says that all things will die on earth because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. Let me explain. If the principal at your school said there would be no recess, it affects everyone at your school because he is the head of your school, right? And well, I, I guess, but that tends to only be true if, you know, it's a punishment for something that the majority of students have done, right? I see God punishing every single living thing because of something two people did as more of the equivalent of giving every student, teacher and member of administrative staff detention for a month because one student cheated on a test. It's kind of that level of pettiness. I mean that just doesn't really seem fair now does it? But it's okay because he does try to justify it a little bit more by saying, well God made Adam the head of the earth. He gave Adam dominion or power and control over the earth. Since Adam was our first leader, everything he did affected everything on earth. We know God told Adam if he disobeyed he would surely die. So, since Adam had to die because of sin, everything on earth would also have to die. And that includes all the animals. It wouldn't make sense to have sinful humans who would die when everything else around them remained perfect. Okay, okay, so I think I get what Ken's saying here. Basically, Adam was in charge, he did something wrong, and now everyone else has to be punished for it. So when I was at school, our head of history had this creepy fling with a 15 year old girl in my year. Um, it was, it was weird. It was slightly, well, it was very predatory. Um, but by Ken Ham's logic, every student studying history at that school should have gone to prison when Mr. Reeves went to prison, right? Because he was our head of history and if he did something wrong, we should all be punished for it. Yeah, that seems fair. Ken writes, when our dog died, I was sad. Mm, maybe he does have a heart. But it reminded me how terrible sin is, and because of sin, everything and everyone must die. At the same time, I was joyfully reminded that because of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, the people who believe in him would, for would live forever with him in heaven, even though their bodies may die here on earth. Okay, I take it back, he has no heart. When I was a teenager, my dog died, and I was so horrifically upset. He was a beautiful, gorgeous, sweet, kind, loving Cocker Spaniel called Jasper and he was just perfect and I was so heartbroken when he died but at the same time I was a little bit comforted by the fact that he wasn't suffering anymore and he, he didn't have to hurt or be ill. I think that's how a normal person responds to the death of a pet, not with, well I was happy because at least when I die I won't be gone forever like my dog. I just find so many of his answers completely inappropriate and heartless. Okay, the next question reads, if God can control anything, why did he let the tsunami hit and so many people get hurt? Did he create the tsunami? And for this, I find Ken's answer particularly disturbing. 
So, you know how a lot of religious people tend to use kind of like excuses or try and justify suffering by saying it's a test or, you know, it's teaching us something? Not Ken. Ken writes, God does control everything that happens on Earth and in the universe. He is the creator of all. He can cause a tsunami and he can will that no tsunami come. Tsunamis, death, divorce, earthquakes, floods, fighting, all the bad things in the world are because of sin. It's not God's fault these things happen, it's because of sin. Great thing to teach kids there. Millions of people die and suffer because you're inherently a bad person and there's nothing you can do about it. That's horrific. He goes on to say, please remember Sam, we are all sinners and sin is the most terrible thing in our lives. Because of our sin against God, bad things happen. It's so amazing that even though we don't deserve it, God sent Jesus who was punished in our place so we could be forgiven. Those who believe in Jesus will one day live in a place where bad things will finally be over for good. Even though we don't deserve it, God, so you're basically telling kids they don't deserve to live a safe, happy life because of something they didn't even do. You can't tell kids that they deserve bad things that happen. Imagine if a kid is verbally or physically or sexually abused and you say, well, it's because you're a sinner, it's your fault that happened. That's horrific. I just, I'm imagining someone saying this to my nephew, my, my gorgeous three-year-old nephew. He's, he's such a little sweet kid, he's, oh, he's brilliant. And I just, it disgusts me and it scares me that someone could say this to him. It's, oh, this is literally the stuff that leads to kids growing up with emotional damage and low self-esteem and being dysfunctional adults. Next up, I don't want to comment too much, I just want to show you this page because this poor kid is gonna hate his parents when he grows up. And the last question I want to address today is this one that simply asks, how do we know other religions aren't true? Which is a pretty excellent question, I think. What exactly does make Christianity so special that Ken Ham believes it is the one true religion and that all the other myths all the other religions, all the other ideas, they're wrong. Why does he think that? He really doesn't give a decent answer, I'll be honest. He writes, no religion other than Christianity has a book like the Bible that tells us about the origin of everything and who we are, where we came from, what our problem is, sin, and what the solution to our sin problem is. They literally do though. Plenty of religions have a book like that. What makes the Bible so special? Or rather, what makes the books in the Bible so special. All of the religions require people to do something to work out their future. Only Christianity has a solution that we can't save ourselves, only God can do it. This makes so much sense now, this explains everything. Ken Ham likes Christianity, it suits him. He follows Christianity because it's the one religion that means he doesn't have to take any personal responsibility. I think that explains a lot. I think that says a lot. But seriously, terrible message to teach kids, terrible. I want my nephew and any future singular child I may have in the very, very distant future. I want them to grow up knowing that their actions have direct consequences, that they have influence over their own lives and other people's lives. I don't want them thinking they're just powerless in the world. He finishes up by just saying, so how can we know if other religions aren't true? Well, if they don't agree with the Bible, they are not true. And then he gives the kids tests they should do, which basically just says, does this thing agree with this thing the Bible says? If not, ha! And it's, it's absolutely ridiculous and silly, and it's the biggest load of crap and a complete non-answer. He does nothing to say why the Bible should be believed, he does nothing to give the Bible any kind of legitimacy. He just says, well, the Bible's true, you have to believe it. These other people, they don't agree with the Bible, so they're wrong. It's literally a non-answer, and it's terrible. It's a terrible thing to teach kids. It really does make me so mad, and I think it's scary, the fact that Ken Ham has kids of his own, and he's been teaching them this stuff, and also that there are parents out there who buy these books and give them to their kids, and they just... This is part of the reason why we have dysfunctional members of society. Not the entire reason, but part of it. It's an influence, I think. Well, this has been a downer. <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts on these questions from kids. Definitely, definitely real kids. 
Uh, let me know your thoughts on them. Let me know your thoughts on Ken's answers and my responses to his answers. What do you think? I'm out of words for Ken Ham. He's an odd, disturbed, dangerous individual, let's be honest. Anyway, like I say, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have made it through this far, thank you so much for watching today. Please excuse my hair being so horrible and light. It will be fixed very soon. If, if you follow me on Twitter at all, you'll know I'm in the process of kind of like stripping all the dye out of my hair and then I'm gonna re-dye it back to its nice, comforting, dark chocolate brown colour because my roots have been growing out badly and I, I hate my natural hair so much. Anyway, although it does kind of make me laugh, I remember once there's this girl who's into Dan once and she started like having an absolute fit when me and Dan started dating and then she was like texting Dan and she was like me 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 and, and Rachel's probably just jealous because she's not blonde like me and then me and Dan had a proper giggle about that because like love, if I wanted to be blonde I wouldn't dye my hair like I'm naturally blonde. Anyway, it was just, it was a good lol. Um, ah, oh, I hate that. I started saying lol ironically and now I say it all the time. It just slips out, it's really bad. Anyway, rambling here. It has nothing to do with Ken Ham. Let me know your thoughts on Ken Ham if you made it through this far, especially with my rambling. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'll see you again soon. Just wanted to say a quick, huge, huge thank you to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon this month with a special thank you to these guys. Ewan Matthewson, Secular Reason, Daniel Clark, Lucky Scott, Jaden Shepard, and Matthew Minema. You guys are all incredible. Everyone else is linked in the description below or on the end screen. You're all amazing and just thank you, thank you so much.